Hi family, how are you doing? It's my desire to pray for you today if you're not feeling well in your body. I believe that the Lord Jesus desires to heal you today. And if you believe, you're going to be healed, all right? Now, because I'm aware of the fact that a lot of people gravitate toward the healing, but not the healer, I feel like it's my duty to tell you all about the healer. Because whenever you see God doing any kind of healing or miracles through me and through these hands, it's only through the power of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, we have to celebrate him, acknowledge him, endorse him, and honor him. So, before I start praying for you, if you'd allow me to talk about the one who has made this and so much more possible... I'm going to do just that so let's talk about Jesus for a brief moment he deserves it um, I was reflecting on Luke chapter 4 before I started the live so I'm going to invite you to go there with me momentarily Luke chapter 4 so what is it about Luke 4 that I like so you do know that Matthew 4 and Luke 4 talk about the same thing. You can find the account of Jesus going into the wilderness for 40 days of fasting, both in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. You may double check that, right? But I particularly like Luke's account of this for more than one reason, and one of which is the thing that I'm going to emphasize just now. So, um... <clears throat> Let's go to Luke 4. And let's look at verse 13 to 14. Okay? So it says here, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. I want you to make a note of that, by the way. Make a note that Satan had only departed for a season. Okay? So understand that the enemy will not go permanently. Because his time to be restrained and detained permanently has not yet come. So for now, Satan will come every now and then and at different times he'll come with different strategies so maybe in one season he'll try to give you a chronic headache while in the next season he'll probably interfere with your studies causing you to have short memories or other issues that might affect your academic performance right so in different seasons the enemy will come and he will apply different methods to oppose you and to, of course, hinder you from fulfilling God's will and purpose for your life. So whenever we succeed in getting rid of him, just know that it's only for a season. And we thank God for those many times when we can get a break from him. Trust me. All right. But no, don't be too comfortable thinking that, oh, he's finally gone and he'll never return. He's going to always seek ways of coming back. All right. And that is why we always have to be vigilant and we always have to try our best to stay in a place of consecration because consecration usually creates and cultivates the kind of environment that makes his darts hard to penetrate it is like a resilient fiery fiery wall that is created around you and it makes him and his emissaries find it difficult to come through or to penetrate those walls. All right. So go to verse 14 now. It says, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region roundabout. I love this so much. So 
it talks about the fact that Jesus went into a time of fasting for 40 days, okay, and 40 nights. Then the Bible says that at the end of the period, when Jesus arose, he arose with power. And you're going to see what this power was going to do in the lives of many. God endowed him with power while he was there in the wilderness, although he was being tempted by the devil, although challenges had come in the wilderness, having succeeded and having overcome the various hindrances that Satan had put in his way, or may I say tried to put in his way. He came out of that season of fasting, not only victorious, but full of power. Could it be that if we should remain in a place where we allow faith to take us through our situations, that while we're waiting in faith, that God places his power upon us and in us? Could it be that the longer we endure, the more capacity we build for power? Could it be that as we wait on God and as we allow our bodies to suffer, because of course in this life we must suffer, could it be that the more we suffer, is the greater the capacity to carry the power? Could it be? Because Jesus was going through quite a time in the wilderness. You'd think that going through a time of fasting, of course you are isolated during that time. You don't even have the strength to engage people in much conversation. And so you'd think it would be a quiet time for you. How many of you know that during a time of fasting, the enemy can come after you like never before. Uh-huh. Problems that you never had to deal with ordinarily. All of a sudden they arise while you're in a time of fasting. Satan does that. Satan does that. And if you endure, I feel like in the same way Jesus arose with power, you too will come out of your season of fasting with power. Hallelujah. So, Having been powered up by God, the Father, when Jesus came out of the wilderness, my Bible tells me that he started to go into various territories and he was healing people. People were being healed all over. Okay? Uh, let me see if I can run through some of these quickly for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First of all, the Bible says that he went into the synagogue and he took up the scroll and he started to read. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down, hallelujah. And the eyes of all them who were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? The devil is a liar. Whenever people cannot comprehend what God is doing in your life, they'll always try to identify you as the person they think they knew or know. As far as these people were concerned, they were like, uh-uh, wait, 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 wait. Before this man takes us into a realm of hypnosis, 
let me remind myself of who he really is. Is this not Joseph's son? It's like they were trying to catch themselves. Like, no, mm -mm. who is this that we just heard? I know who he is. This is Joseph's son. How dare him talk to us like that? But they could not resist what they heard and what they felt. Now, these were words that were clearly being read and uttered by other ministers who would have gone up to read in the synagogue. However, as you can see, just by reading between the lines, there was something about Jesus' words. Many rabbis and ministers had read the very said words in the very said atmosphere. But those words were like wind. But when Jesus, hallelujah, who is the living word, hallelujah, when Jesus in whom is the rhema and the logos when jesus spoke the word that's a double anointing now imagine the word speaking the word glory to god when he spoke it there was something about what they heard and what they felt and when the devils in them could not contain the power of god although he did not necessarily shout of course, people have a way of always going to your past. That's one of the tactics the devil uses when he wants to undermine the power of God in your life. He'll always try to use your past situations, experiences, traumas, etc. To try to put a cloud on your potentials today. But the devil is a liar. Is this not Joseph's son? Yes, he is. But in this hour, he is the son of God. Is this not Michelle's daughter? Yes, she is. But in this hour, she's a child of God. Is this not Marcia's daughter? Yes, she is. But in this hour, she's God's prophetess. Is this not Jason's son? Yes, he is. But in this hour, he is an oracle for the Lord. Allow him to be who he was called to be. And stop trying to overshadow him with your perception of who he is and what he can do. In the name of Jesus, even on this point, we command every cloud that rests over you because of how people feel about you because of their viewpoint of who you are we command that those clouds dissipate someone say dissipate 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 by the power of God through Christ dissipate every umbrella under which you are that is not of Christ that does not represent his kingdom, that is not made of the Holy Spirit. If God did not endorse this umbrella, it means it ought not to be there. So anything that is over you and anything to which you submit and surrender that has basically robbed you of your true identity and potentials whatever has handicapped you in the spirit we command right now that every cloud every umbrella every diabolical covering that the lord of course did not sanction for your life let them be burnt and destroyed by fire right now in the name of jesus christ whatever is hanging over you whatever continues to oversee you whatever continues to be placed over you whatever continues to cast a shadow over you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth son of the living god we 
speak right now unto you that as a child of God we approve only one shadow and only one covering the Bible says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty no other shadow will be permitted in our lives no other shadow will be accepted in our lives and so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we obliterate by fire and by the hammer of the word of God every other structure and everything and person causing and casting shadows over our lives let them go oh katasata reda daba shandidiata e kanana makuti ariaha Begin to renounce every other master that you have been submitting to. Unfortunately, I can't do this part for you, but begin to open up your mouth and let Satan know that you renounce him and you denounce him. Let Satan know that publicly you are separating yourself from him publicly. You are rejecting him and you are in exchange publicly accepting Jesus Christ of Nazareth let the devil know that if out of ignorance you have signed on to something to cast the shadow to rob you of becoming and of who you really are let him know that as of today you cancel you renee on your promises in that area let the devil know that as of today you are turning back you are over Overriding, you are canceling, you are wiping out, you are erasing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open up your mouths right now. I ain't gonna do it for you. Open up your mouth right now. Right now. I don't want to tell you what to say. I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't want to tell you. 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 I don't. I don't. I don't. Open up your mouth. If you and him formed a league, you have every right to tell him you no longer want to be a part of that league. Nobody else put you in it. Even if you were ignorant when you got into it, you have the right to cancel it at any time. Nana kushata. Open up your mouth, Lakoshataya, and begin to renounce Kanana Sataya. Every approval you gave him, Lekoto Shakataya. Open up your mouth, Rakusheke Satana, Nikato Shaleko Sananama Kutaya. Become radical right now, Sheketaya. Let me give you an example of what it means to become radical. So, last night I was praying and before I started praying, I had a thought. Mic check. Can you hear me? I want to know if you're hearing me clearly. about a tactic that I observe from the kingdom of darkness it is of such that praying is being made very difficult this week these days rather it's like getting up to pray is becoming harder and harder and I've been thinking and I've been seeing as I think that it's as though Satan has been releasing poison in the atmosphere and every time someone inhales his poison that person becomes of course poisoned or somehow affected by the toxin in the atmosphere we're not talking about 
physical toxins now we're talking about spiritual toxins now so yesterday i believe a righteous indignation was aroused in shadeen anglin now through prayer everything that i have has come to me through prayer by the grace of god everything i have accomplished by his grace and according to his will has come to Shadeen Anglin only by prayer. Her life is built on prayer. Her faith is built on the word and prayer. Ministry on prayer. Breakthroughs on prayer. Opportunities, favor, you name it, prayer. So prayer is quintessential to her life. Now, the devil has been making praying a difficult task of late. So I believe last night I had one of those reality check like, wait, mm -mm. the devil is a liar. Don't play with me, Satan. When the thought came to me, like me, I said, wait, mm -mm. look at the time. It's prayer time now. But if I follow this feeling and whatever the devil has released in the atmosphere, it would make me just sit there knowing that I should pray, but just can't do it. Listen to me. I became radical. When me say radical. When me say, sorry, let me fix that. What did I say? Radical. Put that in the comments. Put it in the comments. Radical. Radical to the point where when I opened up this mouth, not a word in English. I was so radical that even if devils don't understand tongues, that kind of tongue last night was of such that everything that was in the atmosphere would have dropped dead. Radical. Are you hearing me? You're not hearing me? I don't think you're hearing me because you're not responding. There comes a time when we need to become radical. And when you're radical, you don't business about how you look. If I was the person who cares about, oh me look when me I pray, and this and that, I would not have made it this far under God. You see, when you're radical, when you're saying to yourself, enough is enough, You don't care what you look like in the moment. You don't care what you sound like. If my whole community was hearing me last evening, I cared zero. Because when the devil is loosing and releasing his entourage and his different agents in different territories, you think he cares? You think he's having no second thoughts wondering who is seeing him and who is hearing him? He's so presumptuous. So why should I, as a child of God, have all these thoughts when it's time for me to praise my God, to pray to him and to rebuke the devil? Not me not me wrong person not me you don't know me yet so when we are saying enough is enough and we're becoming radical there is a sound that radical people make when you are radicalized it has an appearance it has a sound It has a form. Radical. Do you hear me? I hear someone saying in the comments, I need to be radical. Well, if you don't become radical, you're going to be left behind. I'm not asking you. I am telling you. The time in which you are is demanding that you step up your game spiritually. You don't see. Hello? Hello? Anyway, I'm going somewhere. Let's pray. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, 
It's very simple. If you're sick, it's simple. All you gotta do is lift your hands and believe. It's not hard. It's gonna be very simple. Just believe. In Jesus' name. I release healing into your body right now. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to your bones, be thou healed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, put your hand where you're feeling the pain right now. Put your hand on that body part that is afflicted. Put your hand there. Do not doubt. Receive your healing right now. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I rebuke that pain. I command it to go now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That sickness I speak to you. In the name and power of Jesus Christ. I command you to go right now. Right now. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, be lifted up in their bodies. You said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Draw men unto you, Lord. Let healing enter the bodies of all those who are sick and are believing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I make eye contact with you, and this is not for the witches that will be watching. I'm not agreeing with any witch or with any sorcerer. I'm agreeing now with the children of God who are really in need of their healing. I release it onto you now. Right now. Receive it right now. Right now in your body. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Believe it. Don't doubt. The Lord says, if you do not doubt, it shall be yours. And I'm agreeing it's yours right now. Take it. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and worship him. Open your mouth and worship him. Let me see who experienced healing just now. The pain left. The sharp pain left. I want to see who you are in the comments. The pain left. It's not there. It's gone. Let me see who you are. Hallelujah. The pain left. It left. Hallelujah. It left. Let's see who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Lucy, I see you. Hallelujah. Someone on TikTok says the shortness of breath is gone. Praise God. Put your hands together. Prue Mandawil says the pain is gone. Glory to God. Where was the pain? In your head, in your back, in your side? Curvy says my feet. Someone says, I felt a pain in my throat. It's not fully gone, but it's subsiding. Tavdon is the name. If you're still here, can you put uh, your hand on the throat? I'll pray for you. That pain will go totally in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, just step forward. Hallelujah. If you want, you can put the phone there. I've seen people do these things. But that pain is going to leave you today. It's going to leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, spirit of infirmity, let that throat go now. In the name of Jesus, we remove your tentacles from that throat right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we remove your hand from that throat now. In the name of Jesus, we decree that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, this person is healed. So we cut away every diabolical influence from the throat with the word of God now we command the word to cut now and heal totally in the name of Jesus 
Father, your word says it is finished. We connect with the finishing anointing now. We stand on your word without any doubt that this word is coming to pass in the life of the person who has expressed the issue is in their throat. Hallelujah. Tamika says the pain in her eyes are gone, but she still feels heavy. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke every power of infirmity from her life. Go now. Go now. Go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go right now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Satan the Lord rebukes you. Satan the Lord rebukes you. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. How are you feeling now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Rebecca says her daughter has a fever. Rebecca, hear the word of the Lord. That in the same way that Jesus Christ entered the home of Peter's mother-in-law. And the Bible said he rebuked that sickness. I rebuke that sickness from your daughter right now. Come on, just believe. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. Fever, I call you out by name. Fever, you have lost at the cross. Fever. Fever. The Lord Jesus took you on his back at the cross. And right now, as I declare that the blood of Jesus ransoms that child, I command you to go from her now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The cough, the constant cough, I release healing into that right now. Make three big coughs now. The person who says, I've been constantly coughing. I want you to cough three times. And as you cough, I command every spirit of infirmity to leave you permanently in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, three big coughs. Go now. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And do not return. Do not return in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I really like the ministry of healing because healing is not as complicated as deliverance. And so, if you joined late and you want to benefit from the prayers of healing, that I prayed all you got to do is just go back to the start of the video of course it'll be available on my Facebook page once I hit and you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to watch it from start you just need to believe it really doesn't matter what your issue is if you're in need of healing and not necessarily deliverance which is another level of healing you shall be healed just believe amen so, of course, before we go, I got to remind you that come Saturday, May 25, this Saturday, tell two people this Saturday, we're going to be in Massachusetts for the Massachusetts Encounter. We're going to be at Double Tree by Hilton Hotel at Boston North Shore, 50 Ferncroft Road, Danvers, Massachusetts. Again, we're going to be at Boston North Shore, 50 Ferncroft Road, 
Danvers, Massachusetts. That's Saturday, May 25. Main service will start at 7.30 p.m. Book signing will start at 6 o'clock. You do not need a ticket to enter. So I look forward to you going back to watching the video. And as you believe, you shall be healed. My name is Shadeen Anglin. Remember, you may send an email to Shadeen Anglin, the number two at gmail.com if you have questions, or you may simply WhatsApp plus one eight seven six three one nine five one six three or plus one eight seven six four three three seven two seven two. Have a great rest of the evening, family. Bye bye. Hi, Jennifer Henry. She says it's her birthday. Happy birthday to you. We wish you all the best for today and for the rest of the week. And we pray that you'll be surprised with something that you really like. Okay? For your birthday. All right. Ah, so this is the month of May. We're wrapping up the month of May. So next month is my birth month. So I want to shout out all the people who will be celebrating their birthday next month in June. But big up to those of you who are celebrating in May. I'm not going to take that away from you. But the best month is coming up, right? God bless you, family. Have a wonderful rest of the day. The number, sorry, somebody's asking me to repeat, plus one eight seven six three one nine five one six three or eight seven six four three three seven two seven two. All right. Karen is going to be celebrating in June. She's celebrating on the 4th of June. Mel Mel will be celebrating on the 2nd of June. Bisola is celebrating on the 25th, which is Saturday. Okay. Happy birthday when it comes, Bisola. Green is trying to tell me. Nova Green is trying to tell me. No, sis. The best month is May. No, it's not May. Okay. Now, Fancy Face on TikTok will be celebrating exactly two days after me. So, I want to big you up, Fancy. All right? On TikTok. Okay? Uh, someone says, I'll be celebrating on the 18th of June. Happy birthday when that comes. Uh, someone says, I'll be celebrating on the 5th of June. Okay? Uh, another person will be celebrating on the second. Uh, mine is the sixth. I don't see nobody born on my day. All right. The 30th. Okay. Anyway, family. Have a great day.